Today on We Talk D&D, we talk about how to make your in-person game tabletop look like this, or this, or even this. Let's get to it. Welcome to We Talk D&D. It's your place for DM therapy, and I am your host and therapist. My name is Ryan. If this is the first time that you've come to our channel, well, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Here at We Talk D&D, this is a channel that is devoted to the Dungeon Master. We do two videos a week, one on Tuesday, Dungeon Master tips, tricks, and product reviews. On Thursdays, we do a little lighter look at the world of Dungeons & Dragons through the review of the memes of the week. If you haven't already, we would love it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That would be fantastic. It certainly appreciates it. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to make sure that you know when our videos have dropped. All right, let's get into it. All right. So you've got a couple of different ways of playing Dungeons & Dragons. You've got the in-person version and you have the online version. Through online versions, you have things like Fantasy Grounds. You have Roll20. There are also some smaller players in that market as well that uh, make playing over the internet a lot easier. For those of you that play in person, you've got some options as well. You've got the Theater of the Mind. You have UDT, uh, where you basically are playing these more zoned type combat system, and a little bit more kind of closer to theater of the mind than uh, you know other things. You can play on a mat. Chessex and various other people make uh, battle mats and you can draw right on the battle mats. We also have a very dedicated group of people who are terrain builders who are, by the way, fantastic and they look amazing. Uh, builders of every type of building you can imagine and they paint them and they look amazing and it's very immersive. It's a fantastic thing. There is also another version, the version that I use which is called digital tabletop, which is where you have a television or a projector of some sort showing a digital map, and then you use minis uh, and other things on top of that map to represent your players and characters. Uh, the maps that you can create are amazing, and I'm gonna go through several of them to kind of show you what's possible. I'm also going to link into the description a couple of different Patreons that I personally uh, follow. Uh, this video in no way, shape, or form is sponsored in any way, shape, or form. This is just my opinion and some tools that I use, and I think they're amazing, and I think you would get some value out of it. The uh, links to the Patreons will be down there, as well as the software in particular that I'm we're going to be referring to. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach right out to me in the comments and in in, in down below. All right, so let's first talk about why you would want to use a digital tabletop. So the a couple of different things. One, if you're theater of the mind, this doesn't matter. Uh, if you are any sort of crafting, building, things along those lines and you enjoy it, keep doing that. For me, the process of building the various maps and then uh, setting them up at the table. See, that was the thing is you go from one uh, encounter to another to another and you have to take those off the table and reset them up. And for me, that kind of took away from the pace of the game that I was looking at. Uh, got exposed to some of this and then also then due to the COVID, uh, got the opportunity to play online a little bit and see what was possible. Uh, so one of the things that I've really found useful in the digital tabletop arena is the ability to go faster and have it look amazing and then I'm not the most creative guy in the world. I do paint some minis on an occasion and, and I also started making some of the black magic crafts, uh, dungeon tiles and things like that. It's just one of those things where uh, I can go faster and have it look better. It's for me a very good system keep doing what you're doing if it's working for you. But if you're interested in finding out how this works and what might be possible for you, this is what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, so speed for me, speed is definitely a priority. Also, it just looks amazing. Most of these are gonna be coming from a group uh, or a Patreon called Dynamic Dungeons. They have things on YouTube. Again, I'll put that into the description so you can see some other options. Uh, the value here is fantastic. 
uh, the you get to go through the archive and pull out all kinds of things. I have an entire external hard drive just jam packed full of this stuff. Uh, it's amazing. You do not have to only use his stuff though, uh, but at the same time, it's just absolutely fantastic. So like this one here, there's a beautiful seascape. So if you're on top of the wizard's tower, um, you can imagine just seeing the waves. There are sounds uh, to each one of these uh, particular uh, files. I currently have them turned off. Uh, a lot of times I do uh, other sound in my game. And so sometimes, but that you can blend them sometimes through the TV, through other sources, things along those lines. So you have a lot of options and the sounds are great uh, from there. So, uh, but this is a just beautiful seascape up on top of a wizard's tower. You can imagine just coming out of this dark tank, uh, whatever it is, and you come up and you're like, whoa, this, and you pop this on the TV. It's just amazing. Let's go ahead and take a look at a second one here. So this is an arena. Matter of fact, my players will recognize this arena uh, very quickly. Uh, just beautifully set up. You can see how the dark is done. Most of the times when the uh, creators of these videos, they bring out dark ver day versions, night versions, sometimes uh, uh, rain and snow and various other atmospheric effects. And it's just incredible. So the uh, what's possible at the table, some of these things are just amazing what they look like and they're definitely eye-catching. Um, one of the things that I think is really important in when we look at this is how the software works. So Dynamic Dungeons, in addition to having a Patreon, also has the Dynamic Dungeon Player. Um, it's a manager, so you can manage it uh, and create the various tiles that you need. And then from those tiles, you can kind of set up the various scenarios. So uh, most of the time I use a four by four, uh, in which you're gonna see on the screen here now, the, uh, the actual program itself. It's pretty basic as far as what it looks like, uh, but it is fantastic for the in-person. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about why this particular software is the one that I chose and also why I think it's the best one. If you know of other software that's uh, available that can do these types of things, please go ahead and uh, comment down below into the description. Tell us all there and I'll go take a look at it. Maybe I'll do a review on those pieces of software as well. Uh, if you happen to know a creator who would like for us to review their givings on this type of a platform, love for to have the opportunity to do that for them too. Again, put it right there in the description and I'll get a hold of them. All right, so as you're looking at this uh, software here. Um, you can see that the uh, it, it's in a grid format. So what I do on the grid that's there, I will put in uh, the most likely scenarios that I think that they might run into. So wherever they currently are, plus the other couple of encounters, be social encounters or maybe be combat uh, in thought out, you know, or I guess either social encounters or places where I think combat's likely to occur. Uh, most of the map makers also, in addition to the weather type things, they also make them grid or gridless. Um, and sometimes when they make gridded versions, they make it for either a 40 inch television or a 50 inch television. Uh, so the software that I use allows me to use the grid list if I want to, and then put my own grids on there. Uh, so that's also an option as well. So in here again on the software, you can kind of see where uh, you can set directional things. So the uh, there's another maker uh, named Epic Quest. Uh, he makes things specifically to use on uh, the Dynamic Dungeon platform. And his things are, um, he makes bigger like cave systems and uh, he made a stronghold, uh, things like that, where he will then load up and give you the file to load up and it will put everything into all the boxes that you need and you can kind of whip around really quickly. I tend to use this software more in the, uh, and I can click and you can see at the very top, there is a window um, or, or in the player, uh, which is on the television uh, that you're gonna be able to see some of these other videos as I pop them through. The uh, on my screen, I can see that. I can also see the square grid that uh, you're looking at in the maker version. And then I also see a list of commands on the uh, side of the screen. It allows me to control things like turning the grid on, turning the grid off, uh, using some of the props and animations that are available, fog of war, uh, what size, uh, whether or not fog of war is on or off, or if it is on uh, the detail of the brush to be able to take some of those things off. 
so it uh, also allows you, know, there's a lot of customization that can be done with this particular piece of software. I'm not gonna go through, this. it's not the full software review, but this is more about what's possible to be done with some of this and give you some good solid examples. One of the questions that you might have would be, well, if I use Fantasy Grounds or Roll20 and one of the others, why shouldn't I just use that? And uh, there's no real reason not to, um, as far as uh, getting, the, getting maps on the screen. The limitations, though, for Fantasy Ground and Roll20 is the size limits that they have. Um, these files that we're looking at are movies. Uh, the You can use stills, and I use stills all the time with my team, depending on what I'm looking for. But at the same time, the uh, the file sizes that you're limited to on Roll20 and on Fantasy Grounds, plus you have the cost of monthly cost. The Dynamic Dungeons, as this video is being shot, is only 30 bucks. It's a one-time shot, and we're done. So it's a uh, nice piece of software. It's not big, and uh, from there, that, that's part of the reasons why, why not Fantasy Grounds, why not Roll20, is cost and the ability to do these kind of size files. So let's talk about why you wouldn't want to use Dynamic Dungeons. One of the reasons uh, is it is somewhat limited. It is not designed for online play. Uh, it's not designed for you to have the ability to broadcast this. The only thing I was thinking of as far as uh, possibly playing with a group of people that normally get together in person uh, would be to use like Zoom and then a share screen and you could share this, the player and be able to show the, uh, the various things on the screen. Uh, this particular software doesn't do tokens and dynamic lighting and those types of things either. It does fog of war um, and you know from there it does a great job as far as that is concerned. One of the other things that you can do is instead of using dynamic dungeons, you can just use the second screen, do the extension off of your laptop or your computer and just play the movies. The reason we started off doing this and the reason I switched away from that is because you have to change the video settings for each video to make sure they continuously loop. And that's one of the things that dynamic dungeons automatically has set up is that the videos automatically loop through all the time. It's really, really helpful uh, so that I, I've got lots of other things to pay attention to. That's just not one of them. So those are some of the reasons uh, and alternatives to using Dynamic Dungeons, but honestly, it's $30. It also, the funds go to someone who is producing maps for us. Uh, there have been plenty of times when I've gotten something, uh, a Patreon notification, and I get excited because I'm like, oh, and it's such a cool thing. How could I use that? And I use that as inspiration for an encounter for my you know, group when we meet. All right, let's look at another one. All right, this one here is a city. So I wanted you to see on this one was daylight and what it really looks like. And you can see animals moving. You can see the trees swaying. Uh, it's a really good, uh, you're trying to do a heist into a building type of, uh, you know, type of encounter, those types of things here. It And uh, done a lot of uh, people running. The nice thing is it also creates height. Um, so you can see a couple of people standing on top of a building, uh, shooting down at the others and you know, people, you know, maybe you got covered, those kind of things makes it really easy uh, to determine from there. All right, here's another one. Here's a night one. You can see some of the lighting that they do on this. It's tremendous. Uh, the, the lighting that I'm cho changing around here uh, during the video is just an LED light strip that I have inside of the uh, TV frame. Uh, one of the things I guess I could talk as I, I will continue to show some of the videos here, um, but the TV setup and TV stand setup, you could probably see it online, some ones that are set multiple thousands of dollars. That is absolutely not the case for what I have here. This is my dining room table. Uh, this is a, I believe about four foot by four foot TV enclosure that's there that one of my players and his father made together. Uh, it sits a TV that I think is about a 36 inch TV, give or take uh, from there. Maybe it's a 40 inch TV. I think it's 40 inches now that I think about it. The, uh, uh, the one I've got sitting here is a plasma. Um, I am going to link into the description a post that uh, where you can, uh, from an Etsy post. I have no idea even who this person is. So again, not affiliated. It's a case um, for a TV and he provides a link to a TV. It's a 40 inch Vizio, I believe from Best Buy. It's like 200 bucks for an LCD. I would definitely recommend the LCD versus the plasma. Plasma gets a little warm and the, uh, 
uh, the depth that you get off of the screen is a little bit different. But as you can see, uh, this works just fine for us. Um, as you can see from these others, uh, there's taverns and there's battles and there's uh, just fantastical uh, other types of fantasy scenes. Um, and then there's uh, flats and videos and things. It's just an amazing opportunity that you have to be able to show some incredible things to your group. Uh, the city one here, you can see it's got a regular city, but then also something dramatic happens in the middle and there's a hole that pops in. And so you can see how that might be a really cool setting and change, but you can imagine they're standing right there and you click one button, all of a sudden the entire screen changes and it's just, and they're still standing right where they were. And all of a sudden now it's this, uh, you know, dropped in hole and fire and everything else is coming. It's just amazing. I'm also going to show you here a little bit in the video about uh, clicking into uh, and removing one of the uh, particular pieces and then also then uh, putting in another one. Uh, the last one I'm going to show you here is the, uh, I had to reshoot a little bit of this video because of Dynamic Dungeons releasing a map pack today uh, to us. So I wanted to show you that as well as what's possible. Um, again. I'm only showing it bits and parts, but there are so many different variations to this. The other thing that uh, Dynamic Dungeons does is provide you with uh, various tools uh, and various uh, types of the maps where you can make your own dungeon. It is not the same software though that he uses to make all the maps, but it, it is things where you can combine things. It's a just a fantastic uh, programming way of doing it. Um, also, I, then I don't have to store all of the uh, terrain, so great on that too. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at Epic Quest. Epic Quest is another maker. One, I think maybe one or two of might be him is his in here, but we're going to do a little bit more on some of the things that are possible through his, uh, and then maybe some others as we go through. All right, so that's our tips and tricks for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you would, give us a like. We'd certainly appreciate it. And if you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It absolutely matters to us. So have a great week and DMs, good luck.